Hey, my name is Justin. I'm a guitarist and a music director, and today I'm going to be doing a pedal board rig rundown. This is my 2023 pedal board. It's got some additions from my last video I made. I play primarily pop and rock gigs, a little bit of country, and some modern CCM or worship music or praise and worship, whatever you want to call it. I designed this board to accomplish all the sounds you would need in any of those genres. I'm sure you've seen countless rig rundown videos by now, and they can be a little bit boring, so I I'm gonna do my best to keep this one not boring. Let's get to it. First in my chain is the Walrus Audio Deep Six Compressor. It's an 1176 style compressor. Outside of sounding good, I think the Deep Six is also one of the best looking pedals on my board. I've always loved all the different variations of it and I think the paint job really influenced me in purchasing it. It has all the typical controls, a level, a sustain, an attack, and then the blend knob is a nice touch. I run my blend knob just below 50% so it's set pretty conservatively. It just tightens up my dynamics a little bit. I find this pedal seems to curve out a little bit of the harsh frequencies in the high end. I think that's really musical, which is why I tend to have this on unless I'm stacking drives or have a fuzz going or something else that is compressing the signal. The Deep Six will run you about $199 to purchase. Is it worth it at that price point? I mean, I like it, but I will also say it is definitely the most removable pedal on my board. So if you're looking to skip something, this is probably it. Next in the chain, I have my JHS Bender Fuzz. It's right up here in the top corner. This is the newest edition on my pedal board. I got it in December of 2022 and lately I've been doing a lot of gigs with this artist named Emlyn. She's a synthy, grungy, pop rock kind of act and there's actually quite a bit of fuzz guitar in it and I was previously using the JHS mini foot fuzz but mine was broken so it was kind of stuck in just one setting. So I figured I would upgrade my fuzz. This bender has done incredibly well for me. It's got a really wide range of fuzz. My tone and my attack or the fuzz amount are set pretty equally. They're about 40% and even there it's incredibly fuzzy. <laughs> I also love the sound of a fuzz with a ton of spacey effects and I find that this pedal does that really really well. At $179, I think this pedal is a complete steal. There's even a JHS switch that gives you yet another palette of fuzz textures to choose from. It's really cool. Next up in the chain is another new addition to the board. It's the Jackson Audio Bell Star. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you know I'm a huge Switchfoot fan and Drew Shirley is one of my all time favorite guitarists. But I actually didn't buy this pedal for that reason. It was a gift to me from a former employer. I think the best thing about the Bell Star is an adds a really amp-like characteristic. <laughs> It's definitely not a very gainy pedal. I have the gain at about 60%. It just sounds like a broken up tube amp. This pedal costs $249, so it's definitely not the cheapest overdrive around. It lacks bells and whistles, but it makes up for it with the body knob and then just the overall tone of the pedal. Its unique signature sound will complement a variety of genres, and that body knob allows you to really add some of the low end that tends to get sucked up with the tone knob. Next, we hit my Stage 2 Overdrive, which is a JHS Moonshine. I love it because it's essentially a tube screamer, but a little thick and growlier. It also has the switch where you can put it into a JHS mode, if you will, which gives it a little more mid and more gain. I use mine in that position. I think it's a really cool pedal for lead tones or even just thick chords. Like it's so rich that I can't imagine myself taking it off the board. <laughs> Thank you. 
It also plays really nice with the bell star. Like these two things stacked together sound good. The JHS Moonshine will run you $199. Seems to be kind of the standard price of admission for an overdrive pedal. I love it. It's my favorite drive on the board. It's also cool that it has that switch again. So you kind of get two pedals for the price of one. And for those keeping score, that brings our total to $826. And all we have is compression and overdrives. If you are new to the channel and you're enjoying this video so far, I would so appreciate it if you subscribe and drop a like. Bless you. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of tone. You've just crossed over into the Strymon Zone. The Strymon Mobius is essentially a multi-effects pedal, but only for modulation. Anything from the 1975 to Spaghetti Western. Even ethereal swells. There's 12 different effects in here and each of them has its own sub effects and its own controls. Like this pedal is completely nuts. The Mobius will run you $449, which feels like a lot, but this pedal makes up for it in capability and sound quality. I was really hesitant to buy it at first because I'm not a big modulation guy and I find myself using this pedal all of the time. It's also nice because I didn't want to have to buy a chorus pedal, a vibrato pedal, a tremolo pedal, a phase a flanger. I didn't want individual pedals of all that stuff. This allows me to have all those sounds in a fairly compact size. Next up is the Strymon Timeline, which has been loved by delay enthusiasts forever, and honestly, rightfully so. There's more delay types and sounds than you would ever need or use, but what really sold me was the amount of presets and the MIDI capability. That's the best thing in all of these Strymons to me. I think you have 100 banks of two in here, so that's like 200 different songs and you're just MIDI controlling them and it's magical. I particularly like the tape delay setting. I use that almost exclusively. The modulation and the subtle bit of distortion you get in that tape emulation is amazing and it adds so much width and character to my sound. it can do the U2 thing. So after refusing to spend money on routing my board in stereo, I finally went ahead and did it. And putting this pedal, well, I'll say all three Strymon pedals in stereo made a significant difference. It's not so much that I have like ping ponging delays going on, it's just, it made my signal go from here to here. So it makes my guitar feel so much wider and the delays so much more lush. The timeline is also expensive. It's another $449, but can you really put a price on great delay. You could probably get something that sounds really good for cheaper, but there is something about this delay that is just special. I feel like it's one of those pedals that's actually pretty plug and play. Even though the interface may look scary with all those knobs, like you plug it in and it's hard to make this thing sound bad. All right, y'all, we made it to every worship guitarist's favorite pedal, the Strymon Big Sky. Now the Strymon Big Sky is definitely not only a worship pedal. That's why you see it on so many boards for all kinds of genres. This is truly the best reason reverb pedal I have ever played. I love all the different reverb types. I don't even use all of them, but there's just a particular character to Strymon reverbs. You'll hear some of you like, ah, oh, it's a Strymon. <laughs> The modulation knob on this pedal is incredible, like it's truly chef's kiss. 
My friend asked me if I ever use more than the three reverb presets you can access on the first page here. And the answer to that is yes. I think I've made 33 or 34 different reverb patches that I have used on a gig at one point or another. Do they all sound different? Eh, probably not. For the big sky, it happens to have a big price. It is $479. But once again, it's hard to find a pedal with such a signature and iconic reverb sound. It's just like one of those sounds you need to have. And this brings the price of our board to $2,203. It costs a lot of money to be cool. And the last piece of this chain is the Walrus Audio ACS-1. This is one of those amp pedals. I bought this pretty quickly after it first came out. I thought it sounded slightly better than the Strymon Iridium. That was kind of the name of the game at the time. And I've been really happy with it. I primarily use the AC-30 style amp and the Fender style amp in stereo. It has MIDI capability, it has presets, it even has a boost pedal. So if you're trying to take a solo and you need that little extra bit of volume, volume and gain, or maybe you just want to annoy the sound guy. I also think this pedal handles my pedal board pretty similarly to a real amp. I didn't have to do crazy surgery on any of the settings of my pedals. I just kind of ran them into here and that was essentially how they sounded when I hit my regular tube amp. Also cool, it has two normal inputs and two normal outputs, so you don't need to get any of those stereo Y special cables. You can just use your normal TRS mono cables. The ACS one is $399, which I think is a pretty slam in price for what it is. The good news in this category is there's so many great options on the market now and they honestly all cost $3.99 so you have your pick. Now we've reached the brains of the operation which is the RJM Mastermind PVC. All of my pedals are routed through this thing and then all the MIDI is controlled by this thing. Each pedal runs into here on its own so it'll have one line out to the compressor and the compressor comes back in then a line out to the drive and then it comes back in. What that'll allows me to do is to leave every pedal on but it remembers which loops to send it to that's allowed me to maximize my pedal board so I can actually go from basically all sounds off to all sounds on by only pressing one button and in addition to just selecting the pedals it'll also change all the MIDI for me on the Strymons. It also has really good software that goes with this and what the software allows you to do is it's almost like having iTunes for your pedal board. Once you create your presets for each song in your set. Assuming you don't change the order of your board or how you've routed into this looping matrix, you can literally load in the songs, drag and drop them across for whatever you need. It's a huge time saver, so once you've done the legwork, you're done. It's a fantastic tool for live. It keeps my tap dancing to a minimum. The Mastermind PVC is one of the more expensive MIDI controllers on the market. It retails at $1,099 inflation. While it's super expensive, it's really streamlined my performance especially if you're playing longer sets like 12, 15, 17, 20 songs. It's really nice to have this and then you can just kind of click through your presets and not worry about remembering where each thing is or having to reach down and change a parameter. Like it's just all done in the computer and you could just our grand total is now at $3,701. Oh my gosh. For power, I'm using the Strymon Zuma. At the time, it was pretty standard that all these power blocks only had eight pedal slots. This one has nine. Each of the nine ports was the 500 milliamp thing. The Strymon Zuma will run you $279, but there are so many great options in this category. Just gonna have to do your research. My board is done with all custom cut Megami cables with the pancake heads. These are soldered cables. I used to have George L's all on my board and I found while those actually sound really good, they definitely seem to break down much more frequently and much quicker. I still on occasion get a cable issue, unfortunately, so I think there's like no way around that, especially if you're bringing this from gig to gig, putting on airplanes and whatnot. The cables I'm using on my current board were actually gifted to me by my friend Chad. When I had my board done with George L's, that ran me close to $300, $350 in just cabling. So I think it's a safe bet to say 
this is probably like $400 worth of cabling. And that brings our total to $4,380. The actual board itself is from Brady Cases. It was a custom built board. It's just a typical flat board. There's so many great options now. It's literally a board you put your pedals on, guys. The actual pedal board itself, I couldn't figure out how much it was. I know I got a deal on it. We'll call that like 250. Oh, and I almost forgot. I have this tiny little routing matrix pedal. It's nothing fancy. It's literally just ins and outs. I did it because I wanted all my cables to just come from one area when I plug in. It has three, so I do one in for my guitar and then I have two out left and right stereo to send to the house. I bought a bunch of zip ties, cable mounts, dual lock to put this board together. So we'll say I spent like $50 on that. Then I bought a basic hard case on Amazon for it and that was like $189. So that brings our grand total to $4,909. Basically five grand to put this pedal board together. <laughs> so much money on tone. And I'm sure some of you are gonna be like, oh, $5,000 for a worship pedal board, that's ridiculous. And you're right, that is ridiculous. It's not a worship pedal board. But you know, I didn't buy all these pedals at once. I've been working on this since high school. And I've never been a huge pedal collector. I've always been a quality over quantity kind of guy. I just tried to find the pedal that was gonna work for what I really wanted and what I needed. And if it ended up being a little more money than I could afford at the time, I would just wait and save and get the thing I actually want. Is it worth it? Well, value is definitely a subjective thing. Gosh, I feel like I'm an economics professor or something. But I will say this, I've had essentially the same rig for six years now and it's still really inspiring. I'd love to hear from y'all with your thoughts on the board and tell me what's on your board. Is there something out there that I'm just completely missing and need to get in on? Don't say Tonex. There's a lot to talk about here, so comment it down below. Be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel before you head out. There's tons of other videos here on guitar tone and all that stuff and I will catch you next time.